Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on in to an incredible LEGO Disney news video. Today we are talking about the brand new Disney minifigure series, series technically number three, but it is meant to release for the Disney 100 year celebration. This is technically from series number 71038 and will be releasing on May the 1st for $4.99 USD or $5.99 Canadian. There's a lot to go through here. We're going to be going in order of the release dates of the films that they are from. So let's go ahead and let's get started with the very first one. And this is Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. The original character before Mickey created by Walt Disney that appeared in a couple shorts. He's here. He's got a brand new headpiece there. He's got the same leg height with the rest of the characters. I appreciate that for consistency with the other Mickey characters from past minifigure series and other sets. He's got a one by two accessory there with uh, it says Oswald there and it's supposed to be a clapper. I think it is really neat. Next up here from the first ever fully feature film we've got the Evil Queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I love this figure. She came out so well here. I really love the crown that she's got there, the cape and everything, the printing. Oh, amazing. But the magic mirror on the wall is just, wow. Really love how they've done that. Sort of made it a minifigure, sort of. They've got the flames underneath, how they've done that, the whole shield there. Wow, absolutely incredible. Next up. We got Pinocchio, and this one is not my favorite, if I'm being honest. It's because I think the eyes are so far apart than normal minifigures there, but a lot of people, when I did my Shrek project, they're like, Lego would never do a molded nose in a regular minifigure head. Here you go. Here it is. <laughs> Love that. So it's perfect for, you know, if they pick my Shrek set, they wouldn't need to create a new mold. It's right there. Anyways, love the hair and the hat. I think that's great as well as the rest of the outfit. He's got mid legs there, which looks awesome. The side leg printing and everything there. Wow. Amazing. He's even got there the little fish, which is Cleo. Awesome to see on that little transparent mini figurehead. Also from that film, we have Jiminy Cricket, his conscience. And I'm so like, I love this figure. I really do. I think, again, same sort of thing. Eyes are a bit too far apart, and they've cartooned. They've made his eyes cartoony, unlike everyone else in the series. I really dislike that. I don't know why they did that. Why the white parts there? It doesn't make any sense to me. Just should be regular minifigure eyes, a little closer together like a regular minifigure. Love the new top hat that's going to come back, I believe, in another minifigure here. The umbrella in that color is awesome, and he's got short legs there so that he's a little bit shorter than Pinocchio, which uh, I don't really mind. But next up, we've got from Fantasia, we have the Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey with a broom. Oh, so excited. Also a bucket, but like that figure, the molded hat there from the Sid, Disney backwards is amazing. Love that. This is who I chose for my original Disney minifigure series three, however many years ago at this point now, beyond excited and just so happy that he is the one that they picked for the Mickey variant. Makes so much sense. It's so iconic. Next up from Alice in Wonderland, we have the Queen of Hearts. And I think that this is one of the more surprising ones, but I love how she turned out. Love the use of this dress piece that they brought back recently so awesome to see it here and then also just the new hair and crown combo the face it's very cartoony see what i mean there but it's got the minifigure eyes so it feels like lego it looks great also the little heart build there is cute simple works so perfectly for lego obviously would have loved the mad hatter i really feel like that would have been great to get here but the queen of hearts is used in so many like disney villains marketing it makes so much sense for it to be here Next up from Sleeping Beauty, we have her Sleeping Beauty herself, Princess Aurora, and she looks awesome. Everything that I could want from her, like the side arm printing there, the new hair with the crown on top, even the little owl friend looks great. See, cartoony, but still Lego. Love that a lot. And just the face, the torso, the dress printing, incredible. It also makes sense with a rumor that we talked about how there is a Maleficent Dragon set potentially coming and it doesn't have her in the set because it wouldn't make sense. She's not in the scene between the dragon and Prince Philip. So 
awesome that she's here in the minifigure series so that we make sure we get the main character from the film. Then we've got from 101 Dalmatians, Cruella de Vil. Again, going back to the Disney villain thing, amazing to be getting her here. Really love this figure. The new hair piece here is so awesome. Really well done. Love the little Dalmatian included as well. I believe that spot. So, so cute. Really great. She has a new like sort of neck piece there, the fur. I think that's fun. And then also some feathers there printed on that piece as her accessory in her hand. Love the printing and everything. It just looks so great. Next up, we've got Robin Hood. And these are my least favorite. That's right, I said these. You'll see why in a second. Robin Hood, you know, I get it. They want to include their animal figures. I think it's fine. They've even got the little feather piece there. And I assume that's all one mold minus the feather. And he's got the bow as his accessory, obviously. Also, you could see he's also got his tail there around his waist. I, I don't know. Not one of my favorite films. I know that it's a lot of people's favorites. I saw from when I made the comment from the leaks. People were upset with me saying that. But I think we can all agree here. This next one with Prince John is just so unnecessary. It should have been Maid Marian. It should have been Little John. It just should have been anyone but him. He's not like an iconic Disney villain, I would say. Not one that they also constantly market with when I look at the other ones that we've talked about already. Boring accessories there with the bag and the coin. Same sort of fabric piece there that Corella has, but it's got spots. I just would never, ever, ever have picked him for the series over other characters that need a partner, like the Mad Hatter we've talked about. Then we've got Pocahontas. Wow, I've never seen this film, never gotten around to it. Maybe I will before the minifigure series comes out, but I obviously know the colors of the wind and all that. I love all the leaves. An incredible figure with the hair, perfect for Isabella from Encanto. We've also got the compass there. Love the printing on her. We've never gotten her in mini doll form either. She was supposed to happen, but then I guess never did. Amazing. Love how, like, it, I can hear the film when I look at this figure. Next up here, Mulan from Mulan. And again, it's another one where I'm like, oh, she looks great. I love her. I think that the hair, I believe, is the same one from the mini dolls, but that's fine. It works great. The sword isn't anything new. She actually doesn't have a single new piece, it looks like here. Even Cricky there in that build. It's just a print, like, would have loved a mold for Cricky. Or, you know who should be here? Mushu. It, it, it's baffling to me. But her printing, however, is awesome. Really love that. And I'm just, like, I'm so happy to have another Disney princess here. Yeah, she is a Disney princess. Next up, we've got Lilo and Stitch. And we've got Stitch again, which sort of, you know, I'm happy with, but it doesn't look like there's any new pieces here. We've got the forearms there from Star Wars we've gotten before, but in red. And then also the head is the same, just a new face. And the blasters are not new either. Love the variant for him, of course. Really fun. I think that it makes sense. Stitch is a huge, hugely popular character. I just wouldn't have necessarily gone with him, per se, for this. Would have thrown him into maybe one of the other sets. Where's Lilo? Needed Lilo. Then we've got Princess and the Frog. Wow. Tiana came out so well here. She looks incredible there with the new skin color. I think that's what's being used here. Take notes, Funko. I don't know if you heard about that. Anyways, got a new hair piece, I believe, there. Love the crown being recolored in that color. Also, we've got the frog, which is great to have Naveen here, you know, in that sort of form. Love the dress, the torso printing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And all the colors, by the way, like from Lego, work so well color palette wise for her dress. Then she's got the little two by three poster there for her restaurant. So cool. And next, Dr. Facilier. Like, Wow. Again, such an iconic Disney villain that's just marketed and just so much by Disney for villains. Looks great. Love again. I think that's the same hat as Jiminy, I'm pretty sure. The printing there looks great with the feather and everything. Also, the card that he's got, the staff, the face printing, also just the torso. Again, I think it's the new skin color. Really, really cool. Then next up, we've got... Baymax from Big Hero 6. This was one that I was very curious how they were going to do. Part of me likes it, part of me doesn't. Like, I love the head, the torso, the legs. Looks great. The printing and all that, awesome. I love the little charging station that he's got as the accessory. 
But then the arms, the only thing that I'm like, yeah, you know what? I don't mind the arm size. It's the hands that are throwing me off a bit here. I don't really like how they look. They've done chicken arms and other different, you know, bats and things like that for different arms. So I don't necessarily mind them doing that, that for him here. Looks great, I think, overall. But next up, very lastly, from the movie Coco, one of my favorite Pixar films, we have Miguel. Miguel and Dante look great. No new pieces created here for him. However, you can see here from a lifestyle shot that a separate head, as well as the Mutt Williams hair there in black, is also included for him. So while he may not have any new parts, he's got two separate heads. It's awesome. But he's got like side arm printing, as well as I like the little hood, hoodie piece in red. I don't think we've gotten in bright red before. The face printing is awesome for him there. And the card... The guitar is basic, but to be honest, a bit disappointed by Dante. Not only the color, I would have maybe gone with dark gray or using the new skin color, I think would be a good middle ground between the brownish and grayish color that he's got. But I just, he's so scrawny. I really wish we got a new part here instead of a reuse of that classic dog piece. But I don't know, still never would have thought we would be getting Dante. And the very last villain and character here is Ernesto de la Cruz. And wow, he, they just went all out for him. Absolutely all out. Like, look at his guitar, how detailed that is. Little over detailed, I think, but his face, the new hair and sombrero piece there, the, the, the printing on his torso, the side arms, the legs, everything about this is just perfect. I'm so happy with him there. Also, for the first time since the LEGO Batman Series 2, we have printed tiles that they're standing on. Love that with the Disney symbol. I really don't know why more minifigure series don't have like exclusive branding. I think it really makes it that much more collectible. Overall, I think this is a great minifigure series. That leak that happened did not help because it just didn't give it justice in terms of seeing it here in high res. I think it really helps some of the figures in, for some cases. But I'm so excited about the Disney 100 year celebration and this series, just great. Again, not all of them I would have picked for this. Still missing a ton of characters, but hopefully that is rectified and they appear in some other future sets, which speaking of, we've got uh, the sets of courts launching on April 1st, which we've done separate videos on. Also revealed is a brand new Duplo three in one castle, which sort of gives us a look at the Lego versions of what those tuxedos and different 100 year celebration outfits could look like for Mickey and the gang. Also, this castle has so many better references, <laughs> I think, and more clear references to the actual different movies than the big other castle had. I don't know, just, just saying. Overall, I'm all in for Disney 100 years. We're getting those two sets being sent early, so I'm excited to review those. Hopefully, same thing happens with the minifigure series, but even if I don't get sent them, I will find them. We'll do reviews and a field guide, all that stuff for that. But anyways, everyone, what do you think of this series? So, so blown away. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.